So solar in Arizona has certainly changed quite a bit as time has passed. Years and years ago, the strategy for solar was simple, primarily because many utilities here in Arizona and across the US typically offered homeowners who went solar a full one-to-one -one net metering. What this meant was that the excess solar energy that a system produced throughout the day was sold back to the utility for full retail credit. Then at night, when the sun went down, you would essentially use that bank of credit that you stored up earlier that day. These credits could be stored day to day or month to month and really help offset the seasonality of solar generation and home consumption. Essentially, the grid operated like an infinite battery bank for your system. You give them one kilowatt hour, they'll give you one kilowatt hour of credit for later. And to see good savings, the timing of when you generated the power or when you consumed the power wasn't that important. All that mattered was that you generated as much electricity as you consumed throughout the year. Now, batteries weren't that popular because they were really only useful for grid outages, which many consumers weren't that concerned with. And solar panels alone were really all that was needed to achieve optimal savings. But a lot has changed over the years, and let's discuss that. So over time, solar has become so popular in Arizona that utilities really don't value homeowners' excess solar energy as much as they once did. I mean, Think of all of the influx of excess energy coming in during the middle of the day when the sun is operating at peak output. Because of this, during that 2016 to 2018 timeframe here in Arizona, we really began to see utilities transition away from net metering at that full one-to-one -one value and move towards net billing with a reduced buyback rate for excess solar generation. This reduced buyback rate is called an export rate or an RCP, Resource Comparison Proxy. And under this RCP model, homeowners are no longer given credit for their excess solar energy at a retail rate, but rather at a lower predetermined rate that reflects the utility's cost to produce that energy from other sources. They're basically treating homeowners with solar like a true power supplier. And the downside of this is that rate is almost always lower than the utility's retail rates, especially during peak hours. For our major utility providers in Arizona, this rate is often now just between four and seven cents per kilowatt hour, which means you're gonna have to sell two, three, or even four kilowatt hours to equal enough credit to buy a kilowatt hour later at retail prices. In addition to export rates for excess solar generation getting lower, we all know that retail rates have gotten much more expensive over time due to energy demand and inflation, which just further reduces a homeowner's electricity buying power. The analogy I think of is imagine someone who is retired and they're on a fixed income every single month. Their wages do not go up. So if the cost of living goes up due to inflation or whatever else it might be, this is gonna kill their buying power. And this is exactly what happens to homeowners who are on these fixed export rates. If you get a seven cent per kilowatt hour buyback rate, and the cost of energy is 14 cents, you need to sell two kilowatt hours to equal one kilowatt hour of credit for later use. But if these rates increase to 21 cents, 28 cents, 35 cents, or worse, over the long haul, you're going to have to sell more and more energy back to offset this difference. It's a very inflexible and limited strategy when it comes to solar. But beyond the overall cost spiking, the rate structures have changed on us as well here in Arizona. We have moved more towards time-based rate plans like what we see in California, which are often required when you go solar anyway. And these are actually the correct plan to take advantage of when they're structured properly. On a time of use rate plan, there are times of day that have peak hours, which is when the grid sees the most traffic and has the highest amount of demand. And therefore, this is the time when they charge the most for electricity. This is like surge pricing. These peak hours are usually a three to six hour time block during the weekdays. You can see here on the screen, a few different examples of utilities peak hours during their summer rate schedule. And if a time block isn't during peak time, it's considered off peak or in some cases even super off peak. And remember each utility is different. So it's really important that you understand the rate structure, how much they charge, when they charge it and comprehend everything. So that way you can clearly explain it to the homeowner. You got to think of the utility rate and structure like rules to a game. When you know the rules, you can maximize the strategy to get the most value in savings out of the systems we set up. Now, the advantage of these time of use plans is that the cost of energy during any of the off peak hours is really cheap. Currently in Arizona, it's between six to eight cents for most of the major utilities on the rate plans that we recommend. These plans are the epitome of the utility offering you a carrot versus a stick. You can charge your EV, heat your pool, and run all the electronics in the house that you want, 
but the utility prefers that you do not do it during peak hours. And the way that they will control your behavior is with your wallet. The disadvantage of these plans, and it's a big one, is the cost of energy during peak hours can be seriously expensive, especially if you're running all of your heavy loads at the same time, like the oven, the pool pump, dryer, AC units, of course, here in Arizona, and charging an EV. You gotta be very energy conscious on these rate plans. And that is where demand charges come into play. Now, demand charges are somewhat unique to Arizona, but they are very important to understand because when we can manage or even eliminate these demand charges, the overall savings on the utility bill can improve substantially. Now, demand charges are a measurement of a home's highest spike in usage measured over either a 30 minute block or a 60 minute block during peak hours only. So these demand charges are not in play during all of those off peak hours which is great. The big confusion around demand charges is that they are measured in KW, kilowatts, not kilowatt hours like we typically see with traditional utility bills. Kilowatts are kind of like your top speed, where kilowatt hours are like miles traveled. Ultimately, this means the utility isn't just charging you for how much electricity that you use, kilowatt hours, but they're also charging you for how fast you use it during those expensive peak times, kilowatts, or wattage. So what can be done? Well, this is where batteries start to make a lot of sense. Incoming solar production in a battery system can help flatten out or even eliminate these peaks by discharging power during those shorter peak hour windows. At the end of the day, understanding and managing demand charges is one of the most important strategies for maximizing your total savings here in Arizona. It's not just about going solar, it's about using your energy with a better strategy. So now we understand how things were, how they've changed, and how the utility operates today, but what is the best system to maximize this utility structure that we have here in Arizona? We still see a lot of solar reps stuck in their ways from years ago where they're gonna build oversized high offset solar only systems, which itself isn't a huge problem. There's nothing wrong with these systems necessarily if the correct expectations are set. The issue at hand is we see these systems sold with the expectation of little to no remaining utility bill which just isn't the case. Timing plays such a critical role now with when you generate power and when you consume power since they are on very different rate schedules. Additionally, most homes will likely only consume 40 to maybe 50% of their generated solar power in real time with the remaining power either getting sold back to the utility for that reduced buyback credit or it could be stored in a battery system for later. Hopefully it's becoming clear that solar on its own can be pretty limiting because it's only producing power when the sun is shining. So if a homeowner needs more energy during low production times or at night, they'll have to rely on the grid and pay whatever rate is in effect at that moment. Take APS's time of use plan, for example, where peak hours run from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. on weekdays all year long during winter, solar can't consistently cover that evening demand since the sun usually sets well before 6 p.m. In the summer, sure, solar panels do operate later thanks to the longer days, but the energy use in the home is also higher because of the AC and solar production still dips significantly in that final hour or two before sunset. This leaves a gap that needs to be covered and that gets us to the significance of integrating a battery system with your solar panels. The battery allows us to store excess solar energy during the day the energy that would have otherwise been sold back to the utility for a reduced rate, and then use that stored energy at a later point in time, either during peak times, which is priority number one, or during evening times when the sun isn't shining. This integration of energy storage takes us from a traditional solar system and adds flexibility both short-term but also long-term since they can be programmed through software to adjust and maximize any rate changes that could occur down the road. These demand plans we were discussing earlier are highly recommended with battery systems because once we add a battery, we can control our energy use during the expensive peak hours. And by doing so, we unlock access to incredibly cheap off-peak energy, like I mentioned, usually between six to eight cents here in Arizona. With all of this being said, remember, it's no longer just about backup in the event of a power outage, that is just the cherry on top when adding a battery. Now, the initial resistance to adding batteries is the cost associated with it. Yes, batteries can be expensive. However, costs have come down significantly over the years due to material costs and better installation methods that have reduced the installation time.
time and labor as well. The logic now is that overproduction of electricity is less valuable. So rather than oversizing the system to these huge 120 to 150% offsets like we've seen in the past, scale it back to a lower offset, size the system with fewer panels, and this will naturally create a budget for a battery system. Why would a homeowner want to generate an extreme surplus amount of energy during the middle part of the day when they have very little use for it? Sure, the utility will buy it back for some credit, but that's not the primary strategy. With this being said, you also don't want to severely undersize the system either. You just want to be more intentional with the system design overall. This includes where the panels go, not just how many of them get installed. Going back to our APS scenario with their 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. peak hour schedule, you want to try to utilize your south and western facing sections of the roof before utilizing the east. And why is that? Think of where the sun is positioned when peak hours occur. Here, western facing panels are more valuable than eastern facing because they produce power at a time of day that has a more expensive cost with the utility. And generally, a time of day where energy demand is also higher. These are all of the little things that you can do that add up to noticeable differences long term with the solar system's performance. Now we haven't even gotten into virtual power plant programs yet, which to put it simply is like net metering for battery systems, but on steroids. Major utilities across Arizona, including TEP, SRP, and APS are actively moving towards a rollout of virtual power plant programs or VPP. Some have already begun their pilot programs while other utilities are submitting proposals for approval. This shift right here marks a major change in how energy is shared and valued at the homeowner level. So what exactly is a virtual power plant? At its core, a VPP allows homeowners with battery storage to go beyond just consuming or storing their own solar power. Now, they can actually sell energy back to the utility when it's needed most. These programs are designed to tap into energy resources like a home battery during times of high demand when the grid is under the most amount of stress. When you're enrolled in a VPP program, the utility can automatically communicate with your battery system via software to briefly discharge some of your stored energy into the grid for support. In return, you get paid at a premium rate for the power that you contribute. It ends up being a win-win. Homeowners can generate extra income from their battery system and the utility benefits by reducing the strain on the grid without having to build new infrastructure. This concept is going to be a key part of how solar and storage work together going forward. This development of VPPs is already well established in markets like Texas, California, and many states in the northeast part of the country but it's continuing to catch traction here in Arizona and adds more value to our product offering and our energy future in years to come. So to wrap all of this up and give you some final takeaways, first, understand and acknowledge that things have changed and selling the same way you may have sold in years past just doesn't cut it. This includes not only your system design, but also the expectations you give the homeowner for that system. Second, know your utility rate structure, both pre-solar and post-solar. This includes the solar export rate per kilowatt hour, the time of use rate schedule, how demand charges work, and the rate structure during both the peak and the off-peak hours. Become an expert at this so you can properly explain the strategy to the homeowner. That way, when you're discussing your recommended system size and the setup, it all makes sense. And then third, become comfortable with selling batteries and with being the expert at truly understanding how these battery systems work. It's no longer just about solar. It's coming down to full energy management because the utilities, they've continued to change the game. And remember, these rules that the utilities set in place are everything. And just like with any game, as those rules change, so does the recommended strategy. Thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, let us know and have a great day.